Hey y'all, how's it going? Hope y'all are having a good day today. So uh, it's William and uh, we'll talk a bit today about software engineering. What is that? And we'll talk about the future. Okay, let's, uh, let's mosey on to the first slide here. And uh, we'll talk a bit about software engineering. I mean, y'all probably think engineering, like building bridges and that kind of thing, uh, buildings. But uh, we have something called software engineering. And this is kind of my definition. We're saying, I'm saying it's the creative process of creating software. Okay, hopefully that, uh, that is uh, very um, simplistic and what well, makes sense kind of definition. All right, let's see how about a highfalutin definition here. Okay, software engineering. We've got an acronym SE. It's concerned with developing and maintaining software systems that behave reliably and effectively, are affordable to develop and maintain and satisfy all the requirements that customers have defined for them. Okay, so that's the official definition, definition from the Association for Computing Machinery, the ACM. Uh, so, as students, uh, actually, y'all can get a discount for being members of the ACM. And it helps to be part of a professional organization. Okay, and ACM is one of the more popular uh, organizations uh, that deal with computer science. And I'm a member myself. And it's pretty cool. They give you, actually, uh, daily updates on new developments in computer science and uh, what the cutting edge, or sometimes we say the bleeding edge, of computer science is today. Okay, so um, what else do we want to say about software engineering? Let's see here. What, what a software engineer actually does, okay, so we're developing and maintaining computer software. And hey, you need experience with programming, and we have plenty of programming classes at Leeward Community College to get y'all ready for this. Now, uh, also part of our um, degree, uh, the associate degree, um, we have classes in communication, okay, such as speech, uh, writing, um, you know, English classes, and problem-solving skills. So, um, you know, when we talk to uh, various uh, potential employers around the state, you know, they do say things like, oh, they need to have computer skills, okay, programming, or making the web pages, that kind of stuff. But <clears throat> besides just knowing how the computers work and troubleshooting and that kind of stuff, uh, employers also want people who can communicate with other people, like team players, so to speak. Um, and you know, whatever you're doing, there's going to be some kind of report you got to write. Okay, any job I've been in except for maybe scuba diving, I've always had to write reports. And so that's, you know, English skills, writing skills. And then um, what else? Solving problems. Okay, so anything you do, there's going to be some kind of new problem, so to speak, or situation, and you got to figure out some kind of solution or, or way to work around things. And that comes in very handy at work uh, later on in your life. Okay, so... Um, even though you know I'm teaching classes, I still come upon you know new situations, and I got to problem solve, or you know especially the uh, what kind of the administrative job of of the, uh, being a professor. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what we got next here. Okay, so a little bit more on software engineering. Now, usually you need um, not just associates, but a bachelor's or a master's. In particular, uh, most of my friends that have master's degrees got pretty good software engineering jobs. And, you know, pretty decent salary, so 60000 to 140000 I'd say that's, that's not bad. Not bad there. And um, that's according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And apparently, um, we have plenty of jobs uh, in the future. Okay, it's just an estimate, but... Um, should be a job that will be around for a while and also the, um, that, that job market with software engineering is increasing. Okay, that's probably, that's a good thing uh, if you're looking for jobs and trying to find a job out there with software engineering. Okay, so uh, another topic we'll talk about is 
The future. OK, let's see what we're going to talk about with the future. Not here yet. Well, actually, some of this stuff is already here. So one thing is the voice recognition interfaces that respond to verbal commands. And y'all might be thinking, hey, we already got that. That ain't no feature. That's right now. Uh, yeah, but you know they're they're still got issues with them. Yeah, um, especially for recognizing my uh, southern accent. Um, sometimes some weird stuff comes out when I speak uh, my southern accent on the voice recognition. Any rate, uh, so these are built into Windows and Mac operating systems. Um, and then uh, a, a software I, I I like to use is Dragon Speech Recognition Software, and uh, they're pretty good. So. It, uh, it actually learns um, your accent to some extent, yeah, unless I really talk really Southern like this and then quite recognize it. Anyway, that, that's kind of what's coming up. You know, it should improve uh, uh, over the time. And let's see what other interfaces that we have um, kind of coming up. Uh, one thing is wearable computers. Now, actually, these have been around for a while. Okay, uh, the earliest was an abacus on a ring, perhaps in the, as early as the 1600s. And then more recent, uh, I remember in the 90s, and still now, you know, they had the, the dive computers for the scuba diving back, uh, back when I was a scuba instructor. And then more recent, the Nike Fuel Band, it's like an activity tracker. Um, so, you know, and we'll see more and more of uh, these devices that you can just wear uh, on your wrist or, or maybe in your clothing, that kind of thing. Um, I think back in the day, you know, you had the Dick Tracy cartoons. He was like a detective and he had a little watch that was uh, like a, a, a video phone. So, you know, we already have that now. But again, uh, some more wearable things, maybe... Um, you know, we'll have uh, nose, nose rings or earrings with some kind of crazy computer interface. Maybe it measures how much uh, boogers you got or something like that. Okay, uh, next part here. Let's see uh, what else we got going on. Uh, gestures, all right. So, you know, the Wii uh, remote kind of does it already. And I don't know if you all saw the uh, Minority Report. I guess that movie was uh, out a while back, but they had those kind of interfaces um, in that movie. Yeah. Uh, then more recent, uh, they have what's called brain-computer interfaces. And you know, that sounds great you know, if, if you maybe um, had some kind of injury, maybe uh, you know, have some mobility issues, um, then there's certain devices and prosthetics that to some extent we can actually move with our thoughts, okay? And then the flip side of that uh, is, say, ethical issues. So um, if you have these implants with computers, okay, well, you're controlling the computer to do things. Maybe, you know, um, you can't move around so well, but maybe you're getting a device to move around for you. But you got to think, okay, what's the opposite, though? Well, well now you got these, you know, this computer interface in your brain, well, to what extent can they control our brains? Okay, maybe turn on certain uh, thoughts or moods or even, um, you know, uh, all kind of things. So there are some ethical issues uh, with the computer brain interface. All right. So let's see uh, what we got here next on our s slides. Uh, then we have an organic user interface. You know, I have these funny acronyms, yeah. Oi, oi, what you got there? I got an oi. So that's a flexible display. And um, what else here? Tangible user interface, TUI, TUI. Uh, so that uses objects to interact with a computer. And say, you know, kind of one that's been around a while is the computer mouse, all right? And more recent, they have uh, this thing called Pixel Sense, and it's a big table. And you put things on the table, and it actually recognizes what's there. Um, you know, maybe you put a camera there, and it just, boom, downloads all your photos for you, and you kind of move them around the table. So all these uh, interfaces have pluses and minuses. So that sounds cool moving around the table, but, um, you know, maybe you start getting neck pain from doing that, or, um, I don't know, you get the table all dirty or something. Anyway, so everything's going to have some kind of drawbacks. Yeah. 
OK, so let's check out one more thing here. And another is augmented reality, man. OK, so you, you put sensory out, out input of the world um, and, and combine that with computer-generated input. OK, one example is the Google Glass. It's a device attached to your eyeglasses. And you can actually control this uh, device using your voice command. Okay, so you might look kind of weird, uh, you know, sitting on a park bench with this little attachment on your glasses, and then you're like talking to yourself while you search the internet. Um, anyway, this is not too much different than people with cell phones that are in their ear and look like they're talking to themselves. At any rate, on that note, uh, we'll call it a day for this section of ICS uh, 100, and uh, we'll check you out a little later. All righty.